Game three between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Montreal Canadiens, if you're watching this, should be tonight at the Bell Center. And at this point, Josh Anderson still only has one goal. And he scored that goal in the very first game of the postseason against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Josh Anderson, an acquisition made by GM of the Year finalist Mark Bergevin. I guess well-deserved for Mark Bergevin. Uh, we saw what he was able to do in the regular season. And in the playoffs now, at least from a stats perspective, just the one goal. I have my thoughts on his overall play, but I'm very curious what you all think of, of Josh Anderson only having one goal to this point in the playoffs. I mean, I, I love Josh Anderson. I mean, I love his speed. I love his size. Obviously, he's not getting any production from a, a guy that was second in scoring with 17 goals in the regular season. But, you know, what I see with him now, I don't know if he's preoccupied with trying to get the big hit. Like, he's running around taking himself completely out of position to try and get a big hit. I don't know if that's been directed towards him as far as what they're looking uh, from him. But, uh, you know, I think it's it's taking away from his overall game. And, I mean, we've seen this guy skate, which he is skating. He competes. He's going to that. But he doesn't get any shots. I don't see him using his shots, which is a, a big asset of his. And, you know, until he starts to use his shot and maybe – hold back a little bit on running around trying to get the big hit all the time. Uh, you know, he's, he's using a lot of energy uh, sometimes for nothing. So I think if he gets back to the, the basic, uh, you know, up and down your side, and when you get a chance to crash the net, you get a chance to shoot it, you got to go for it. And I think things will turn around for him if he, uh, if he takes care of those uh, couple of details. Yeah, I agree with Rick 100%. He's got to shoot the puck more. He keeps trying that move where he drives to the net, but it's not working against those big Vegas defensemen. They're able to hold him off and push him away from the net and drive him into the boards behind the net. Uh, you wonder if he's playing with an injury, but the way he's skating and the way he's hitting, as Rick mentioned, I, I, it seems unlikely that that's the case. But this isn't the first time this has happened to him in the playoffs. Two years ago with uh, Columbus, he only had one goal in 10 games. And he's played, uh, look at my notes here, 34 career playoff games. He only has four goals. Uh, so this isn't the first time this has happened to him in the playoffs. It's sort of a similar situation to Thomas Tatar, who uh, scores goals like crazy in the regular season and has a problem in the playoffs. So it's hard to figure out uh, exactly what's going on with, with Anderson. You know, but it, Rick's right. He's got to shoot the puck more. Uh, that move trying to go to the outside and drive it just isn't working. Uh, against the Vegas defense. It worked against other teams in the regular season. He's got to find a new strategy and, and maybe fake that drive to the net move and pull back and shoot the puck. Uh, but they need him. You know, they're winning without him scoring. Uh, he hasn't had a goal since the very first game of the playoffs. That was a long time ago. Um, so he's got to find something, do something different. And, they, you know, they need him to start chipping in with some goals. And I remember before the playoffs started, we talked about who would be the difference maker in the playoffs. And Josh Anderson was one of my picks. I thought for sure that he'd be able to pick up where he left off during the regular season. But it, there, there's just something off with his game. It's like he can't find himself again. And and maybe it is the pressure of now you're in the third round and you're, you're still not being able to find that way to score goals again. And maybe the pressure is really mounting on him. And he's trying to do too much. And it's backfiring on him instead of trying to keep the simple things shoot the puck from wherever you got it from because you never know who it you know might go off of how it might go in it might be one of those fluky goals and a lot of times when you hear from players they say you just need that one goal and then it can open the floodgates and hopefully that is the case for josh anderson uh is so that he can you know find his game again find his rhythm and hopefully he won't turn in or can, to be like a thomas tatar a player that just really can't bring it when it comes to the playoffs I think he's just become too predictable in the offensive zone. I think Vegas knows what he's going to do, uh, and, and they're, they're ready to defend it. So he's got to mix it up a little bit. I think Josh Anderson, from a purely offensive statistical standpoint, could stand to improve those statistics. Obviously, the one goal, especially for this Canadiens team, it's clearly not sufficient. But with everything else, I don't necessarily have a problem with his game. I find when he's being, you know, that four checking forward when the defenseman has his puck in the own end and he's that high forward up, I think he's doing a decent job at that. There's instances where he's he's barreling himself into the offensive zone, getting that big hit, but that hit is also keeping the puck in the offensive zone and trying to maintain possessions for the Montreal Canadiens. And personally, beyond that first goal he scored against the Toronto Maple Leafs, 
the second best thing he did he's done in the playoffs so far was the work he did on Paul Byron's goal in game two. That's a total broken play where Paul Byron is just kind of looking at the puck just trickling into the offensive zone, and he's faster than a lot of people on the ice, so he's able to get that puck first. But the biggest reason why he's able to get to that puck first is because the defenseman who's supposed to be able to get that puck for the Golden Knights is completely pushed out of the way by Josh Anderson. That's the best play he's done all series, and it led to that broken play, which led to Paul Byron scoring. So I think if Josh Anderson is able to do plays like that, where you know maybe it's not a direct pass, but it's still creating offense in some way, or at least helping to sustain pressure or possession, I mean, I, I, it's the little things here, but I think if you're Dominic Ducharme and you're the Canadians, you can't get too mad at that. At some point, obviously, you have to look at the offensive production here and say, hey, we need some goals from you, especially from that line as well. Uh, I know Paul Byron got that goal in game two. Game one, that line between Byron, Kakanemi, and Anderson wasn't necessarily looking so hot. But if Josh Anderson is able to do little things like what he did in game two and continue to be an intimidating presence, you know, I don't want to say you can completely excuse the fact that he only has one goal, but I think it's a little easier to stomach. That's that's my view, unless you guys think I'm wrong, but I think I'm pretty right in my opinion here. No, he's, he's working hard. And, you know, if you're working hard, chances will come. And, you know, for Paul Byron, what a sweet backhand move that was. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, Paul Byron is uh, pretty good when he uh, gets himself that space. How do you feel about Josh Anderson in this postseason? Let us know in the comments section below. Visit Hockey Inside Out to check out our full episode, hockeyinsideout.com. I forgot to add the .com, but that's okay. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as we continue our climb to 10,000 subscribers. It may not be Steve Dangle's numbers or any other hockey YouTuber's numbers, but uh, we're pretty content with reaching 10,000.